need a COVID test in order to make it to Lima. But we don't have them in this city or any city near us, so we have to go all the way to Cusco to get them. So here's where you wait in line, but nobody's here. Temperature? It doesn't look like there's many options to sit. And now we wait. We're Alex and Lindsay, two travelers who are exploring South America, when suddenly, strict lockdown began leaving us stuck abroad. We've been here for months, and even though lockdown is lifted, things in Peru are far from normal. We're documenting the whole thing and sharing it with you. Good morning guys from Apu Lodge in Ollantaytambo. And today, we're going someplace special. We're going back to Cusco. We um, haven't been there in a long time, so this will be kind of crazy going back to where we spent four months on lockdown, and apparently now they're back on lockdown. And we're not going there for fun. <laughs> we're not going there to do cool stuff. We'll tell you about it while we walk. All right, so we have to go to Cusco because we need a COVID test in order to make it to Lima on our drive because that's where we're flying out of. And there's lots of checkpoints. We got special permission to go into Cusco even though they're on lockdown because we have booked a repatriation flight. So, we'll see how this goes. We found out that we had to get these rapid COVID tests and we have to do it soon. But we don't have them in this city or any city near us, so we have to go all the way to Cusco to get them. So the actual repatriation flight doesn't require any sort of COVID test, which is surprising but the drive to Lima does. At the checkpoints, they're gonna stop and ask us for paperwork. And normally, we wouldn't be able to go to Cusco because they're in lockdown, but we have special permission because we booked this flight. We have paperwork showing we can go in to get a COVID test. We've never had a COVID test. I'm kind of nervous, but actually the rapid one we heard is a finger prick rather than like going up your nose, which is nice, but also the rapid test isn't as accurate. So it is possible we could have a false positive and that would be really bad. So we are very scared of that because we have heard of other people, other people we know that have tested positive when they're not really positive. So if that happens to either one of us, we probably can't get on our flight to leave here. And this is like the only flight that we've been able to find. If we don't catch this one, we could be stuck in Peru for four, five, six more months And we lockdown. also paid a ton of money for our repatriation flight, so that would be horrible to miss out on that. Let's hope <sighs> for the best. We're gonna get our results today, we think. Let's get in the car. Can we change five minutes? Dile cinco minutos. Yeah. Oh, wait, we're oh, right. just changing a tire Set before up, we go in the town. Hora, en una hora, no? sí. Okay, we just got in the car and we're on our way to Cusco. Luckily we got the tire changed. <laughs> and it should take about an hour to get there. And we'll show you guys the whole process, as much as we're allowed to film, of getting this COVID test. And we'll let you know how it turns out. What the hell? Do you see it? Yeah. Guys, look at this. They have a string. <laughs> what? hope we can make it to our appointment on time because this was very hard to get. It was very difficult. We were hoping to leave a lot earlier than we did and now <laughs> there's traffic, there might be stops to get into Cusco and we might be late and then we spent this whole ride getting to Cusco for no reason. <laughs> Hopefully they'll let us have our test even if we're a little late. And then we had to change the tire. Yeah, so we left 45 minutes later than we needed to leave to get there on time, so we're really hoping. <laughs> we somehow made it 10 minutes early. Ah, uh, surprisingly there was no checkpoint that we had to cross to get into Cusco, even though it's locked down and they're not letting people into Cusco. I think our driver knew how to avoid that area or something. And as you can see from the footage, it does not look like a lockdown. <laughs> there are people everywhere. And here we are. 
So here's where you wait in line, but nobody's here. Get a little bit of this and stuff on the back. Temperature. And we just gave them our passports to verify our names. All right, it doesn't look like there's many options to sit because they make you alternate seats. And those are prohibited, so. Okay. That's fun. So we notice a lot more people wearing the face shields. Yeah, it's actually mandatory in some places, so more and more people are doing this mask, but also the shield on top of it. Extra protection, I guess. And it actually looks like there's more stores open in Cusco, more people than there were when we were here a month ago. Even though it's locked down. Odd. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> We're confused. And now we wait for who knows how long. We might be on Peruvian time today. So it's 140 each, so it's 280 sole for both of us to get this done. Okay, I just got it done. Look at that. It didn't hurt that much, but it's very quick. I imagine so it's done. a finger prick that's similar to checking your insulin. Just pricking like the side of your finger, drawing yeah. a little blood to test it. Yeah, not bad. Now Lindsay's gonna go in there. Hopefully I can film it. They got my pulse rate. They're gonna take blood pressure and then weight. Now we're getting the weight. Let me show you how much Lindsay weighs. 65.3 kilograms with boots. Okay, now it's Lindsay's turn. I'm actually happy we're getting the finger prick instead of the up the nose long. Much better. That seems less enjoyable. <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep your eyes from it. Too yeah, much. Yeah, it's just like when you check your insulin. Yeah, it's too much blood. It's like a little prick. She already did it. It's done. Too much blood for YouTube. We can't show it. Then she just has to feed the blood into the test. <laughs> it's a little plastic rectangle that they put the blood sample on and then in 40 minutes we'll get our results. Okay, now I guess we have to wait for 40 to 50 minutes to get our results. So we're gonna get some food and then we'll be back in a few minutes. It's very weird being back here in Cusco. We lived here for many, many, many months. And now we haven't been here for like, a, for about a month. It's like going back to home. Yeah. Home away from home. Except that we don't have Potato Head. And that's sad. This will probably but, be our last day in Cusco for who knows how long. And our driver is waiting for us. Our driver from Oyenta. So we can't walk around and enjoy ourselves in this city or else we would. Results and then go back to Oyanta. Uh huh. So we are lucky that our clinic was right next to Yola, which is one of our favorite places in Cusco. Cheap food, very fast. So here we are. We're waiting on a combo with chicken, with pollo, papas fritas, ensalada, chicha morada, y arroz chofa. Look at the delivery drivers, what they have to wear. Look at this 
wash station right outside of the restaurant. Whoa, got our food, bunch of stuff here. And let's go and check out our results. We just got them back. Woo, negative, negative, now. negative, negative. One step closer right. to going home. Oh, <sighs> it's been a long day. I was afraid I was going to be positive. <laughs> okay, we were really nervous Alex was going to be positive because he gave me mine like right out and open. He's like, hey, go, Lindsay. <laughs> I like, negative. And then Alex, he like left the room and came back. He's like, Alex, 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 Jake. And then he <laughs> like, all he turned so that I couldn't see it and he like showed him and it was negative. <laughs> <laughs> what, was he just messing with me? I don't know. It gave well, us a mini heart attack. Ah, uh, we're Woo! happy, we're happy. All right, we're free. Let's go home. Uh, since we know we're safe, we can take off our masks and keep others safe. And now we're gonna eat our Yola, and we're pretty excited to have some food finally. So Lindsay got some fried chicken. How is it? Delicious as usual. We have some Papa Spritas down here, and we have some roast jalfa. Okay. Time for a little Q&A. Haven't done this in a little while, so we're excited to answer some of your questions. All let's right, go. let's get started. First one is from DSA. What is the night sky like where you are? It's incredible. It's so clear. So many stars. And they're super bright. We've never seen this many stars ever. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, back home, it's not as clear as this at, mm -hmm. in a lot of places. And we've heard that now is a really good time of year to see the Milky Way. So, yeah, definitely do some stargazing at night if you come to Peru. Mm -hmm. Next one comes from the Enkies. Hope I'm saying that right. Greetings from Jackie in Minnesota. That's where I'm from. <laughs> she said, I'm curious about how your clothes from the laundry turned out. Folded, sorted, line dried, smelled like detergent from back home. A treat from rinsing them out in your sink. Yeah, al yeah. always a treat when you travel and you actually get real laundry washed, dried, and folded. Because, I mean, typically I don't like to spend the money, so I'll do it in the sink all the time. <laughs> and sometimes don't even use soap, just kind of rinse them out in the water overnight. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take much to beat sink laundry, so... <laughs> Yeah. Lately we've been paying to get our clothes washed. We don't do it that often. We've maybe only done it. It's probably every three weeks or something. We'll I'd do say it. less than that. I feel like yeah. we've done it like five times our whole time in Peru. So like, yeah, so almost once a month we'll do laundry, uh, real laundry. Yeah, and it is nice. They come back folded, dried. A lot of people in Peru don't have dryers, but when you take them to like, when you take them and pay for your laundry to get cleaned and folded, then they will dry it. We think. We think they went through a dryer. They tell us they tell that, us. but who knows. So, yeah, nice treat. <laughs> okay, the next one is from Mark Keller, who asks, You've tried Peruvian wine and Peruvian coffee. Have you had the chance to try Peruvian chocolate? We have. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lindsay's probably had more than me, but I know that I've had a chocolate that had ahi pepper. So it's chocolate mixed with ahi pepper, maybe salt, and it was phenomenal it gives it a little bit of spice which is awesome like a spicy chocolate that's i haven't had much of that in the states <laughs> spicy chocolate. uh yeah and they use ahi pepper in a lot of things in peruvian cuisine so it was kind of like a peruvian foodie chocolate spicy picante it was awesome they have a lot of different uh, chocolates like that where they mix ingredients in that we're typically not used to also oh, we found yeah, yeah. like i was gonna say like like another one that i had was uh Aguaymanto. Oh, so yeah. chocolate with aguaymanto. Which is which, a fruit here. A fruit that you can't get back home, I don't think, or at mm -hmm. least it's hard to find. It's like a little uh, yellow... Tomato berry. Mm, tomato berry kind of thing. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I found that the chocolate here is less sweet. They don't really add sugar, it doesn't seem like. It mm -hmm. has more of like that cocoa taste. It's more of like just pure cacao, cacao. sometimes. Cacao, yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, pure yeah. cacao taste. Yeah, so Lindsay had a hot chocolate that was pretty much pure cacao. It wasn't sweet at all, so it was the chocolate taste without the sweetness. It's like bitter and rich. Which you like can't find that in the U.S., at least I haven't. So that is a different flavor to us. It's Very strong. It's good, but it takes some getting used to. 
Okay, the next one is from Rebecca R, and this is kind of like a two-parter, so let's start with the first part. So she says, sometimes you'll give a tour of your place and say you got a discount, but it would be really appreciated if you include details of how much you pay and how the cost is different due, the, due to the pandemic times. Mm -hmm. um, so, Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> so we understand that it would be really interesting to tell you guys what we're paying now during the pandemic, but the reason we've kind of avoided that is because we don't feel it will be helpful long-term when people watch our videos. So say someone watches our videos and a year when the pandemic's over. We don't want you guys thinking, oh, I'm gonna come to Cusco and pay $10 a night for this place when really it's like $50 a night. So yeah. that's that's a lot of the reason why we haven't mentioned it because we want to give accurate info. Yeah, it's just not gonna be very helpful unless you're here right now, but our videos hopefully get views in six months, a year when mm -hmm. things are different. We don't want you to think that a place is much, much cheaper than it's actually going to be once you get here because we don't want to have you try to go somewhere and try to stay there and then you get very disappointed by how much it actually costs. A lot of these places we're staying in, they're actually probably too expensive for us typically, mm -hmm. but at this time, just this time, they it have works. discounts of 20%, 50%, sometimes slashed 80% off and so we're able to stay in these places. But once yeah. you get here, you probably wouldn't be able to. So what we do for you guys is we link the Airbnbs, we link the hotels below in the description so that you can click on it yourself, you can see how much it is now, and then in the future, if people click on it, it'll show how much it is then. So we try to think more long-term for the videos, not just like now. So that's, yeah. we just wanted to explain why we do that. And that's kind of why we do tell you about the prices of our food because we know you do want to know the costs associated with travel and everything yeah. we're doing. And the food will be about the same price even when COVID's over. So that's yeah. why we do that. So once the world goes back to the way that it usually runs and prices go back to the usual prices, we will tell you the prices of our Airbnbs. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. So. We will be transparent with you guys. We're pretty real. We keep it real. So... Um, and then there was a second part to the okay. question. She said, could you talk about some of your frustrations and struggles during these COVID travel times? Woo! A lot of them. There's a lot. Oh, Let's it's... try to keep it to a few. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll talk about my number one and then you can talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think my number one frustration is the inconsistency of the news that we hear. We don't really know what's real, what's allowed, what's not allowed, what's closed, what's open. We hear so many different things. So we yeah. really have no idea what's right or wrong in a foreign country. And so that's been very, very hard. Yeah, in Peru, it seems to be all about the rumors. We don't know who starts them, but there are rumors of things opening and things changing. But then you never really know. You hear kind of very conflicting things. You don't know what to believe. So For by example, the time... For example, like hearing that Machu Picchu is going to open yeah. three different times. And then it isn't even close to being open. Yeah. And by the time we hear when something is changing, it's the day before and we have no time like to change Like if there's going to be a lockdown, oh, they don't let you know a week ahead. <laughs> they let you know a day before. Yeah. So we have no chance to move to another place where we want to be locked down. No chance to mm -hmm. really get all our groceries and get prepared or anything. We hear right before, even though you hear rumors leading up to it, that it could be this date yeah. or this date or this date you or this date. You never really know. You don't know. Well. So what's your number one frustration? That was mine. Um, uh, it's, it's pretty much that, that things... Give an interesting... It's pretty much that things are not opening up, that that things are not getting better, even with all these lockdowns. Things are supposed to get better, or at least stay the same. But after all this time on lockdown, many, many, many months of things not running properly, putting in the effort, hoping that things will get better, it's actually getting worse. And so things are getting locked down, the country yeah. is closing longer than it was going to close ever. We just heard that it'll probably be closed until uh halfway through next year and we had no idea it would go nearly 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 that long it's just yeah. getting worse you bring up a good point that i sometimes forget about if you guys have watched our previous videos you know that the lockdown in peru was extremely strict i would be willing to bet one of the most strict lockdowns in the world for four months i think almost five months four and a half months and <sighs> It, it really didn't, didn't do that much. When we first got here, Peru had like no cases and then they had a strict lockdown and we still ended up like the epicenter of the world for COVID. How does that happen? 
it just it, it makes no sense so it's like you work very hard on something mm -hmm. you work hard for on building nothing. something creating something for months and months and months you put everything toward it and it just all crumbles into nothing and it was all for nothing it is we're worse off than we were six months ago well i mean maybe we would have been worse maybe we would have been at the point we're at now earlier maybe it just prolonged the inevitable <laughs> But who knows? Anyway, yeah. not, I think we're done being negative. But anyway, we thought it was going to get better. Those are just a few of the struggles. <laughs> we thought it was going to get better. We thought we'd be able to travel. But or maybe worse. maybe we'd be able to fly home without paying $3,000. But Next question comes from Jeff Butter. Okay, lighthearted question here. How are you dealing with getting haircuts? Not very well, When's obviously. the last time you got a haircut? <laughs> Have I gotten one since we've known each other? Like since we started talking, no, like before we met. I don't think so. When's uh, the last time? I must have gotten after India. Ah, I got a haircut. My last haircut was in India. That was yeah. like. I got it for one dollar. That was almost a year ago, last fall. Wow. Yeah, almost a year ago. And, and as you can see. And it's it's getting somewhere, but uh, it's taken a year to get like He's this. He's growing his hair out. Yeah, so I'm growing it out a bit. And uh, Lindsay hasn't gotten a haircut for a while either. Wait, let me speak for myself. <laughs> and for me, I got a haircut about a month and a half ago when we were in Cusco. Oh, yeah. And I can't wait to go back home and do something with the color of my hair. As you guys have probably seen, it's grown out. This is my natural color. And so at the start of this trip, my hair was all blonde like this. Yeah, you should go back and watch the videos from the very start. And you'll see my hair is like <laughs> way up here. And then Lindsay's hair is all blonde. There's barely any brown up here. And now it's like all brown yep. down to here. So, so we've changed we've, a bit. Yeah. So we're ready to get home and do some. Get some well, manicures and pedicures. And, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do anything. We'll go home and <sighs> refresh ourselves. Yeah. Freshen up. Ugh. All right, that's the end of the Q&A. Please like this video. It really helps us out. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell notification button next to it so that you get notified of our videos. Comment below and if you have a question that you want answered in our next Q&A, please ask your question. Ask us anything. It can be a comment as well. All right, we will see you in the next video. Hey guys, we can only do so much on YouTube and we only put out a video every two or three days. So if you want more, if you want daily stuff, you should head to Instagram, find us at Alexander Travel Bum, and that's where you'll find daily stories and photos about our travels. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos. Subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.